Howdy folks, Brian Cusco here at Triple B. Our guest today is Mr. Daniel Solis, and we're going to be talking about super dwarves and his theory that possibly there are no locales of super dwarves and they're all just crossing across all these different islands and mixing together. He's actually over there right now on the islands uh, getting research right now to prove out his theory or disprove his theory, either way. And uh, yeah, that's what we're talking about today. So strap in your seatbelts, uh, you're watching Triple B TV. So my friend got the sunny. We were out in the field in uh, in Ecuador in the Amazon, and man, when, when was this? Uh, two months ago. Two months ago. Mm -hmm. What were you guys What were you guys doing out there? Um, so I took uh, a group of people out on a herping uh, expedition, and I stayed a few days extra just to yeah. go photograph some stuff. What did you guys own. find out there? Man, what did we found? A lot of different animals that um, are very. Uh, rare you know some of the the frogs um uh, you know that that we found were uh, you know you only the reports are only once every so often and we found them um uh, uh, as far as common names are uh, uh, brazilian rainbow boas we found one what else we find those some of the cat cat eye snakes or the boiga the uh, well in south america uh, they're not boigas. The boigas dendrophilia, dendrophilia are from uh, Indo. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, you've taken people herping out in Indo too. Recently. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that started like, I guess everybody wants to go out and explore. I think part of owning reptiles is that that connection that we have with the field. So I just went out there and did it, and uh, people saw the pictures, the videos, and then asked if they can join. I, I didn't do this as a business or, or try to make money out of it. I just did it because I was able to. But then I had inquiries about, okay, how much could you, um, you know, how much you will charge me to take me? And then I figured that there was a little market there and we kept, we, we kept doing that. How many times have you taken people to Indo? Okay, to Indo, at least five different times. You've been in, in the last like year and a half, two years? In, in the last three years. Yeah, uh, and I'm taking another group. Well, it's uh, it's me and my girlfriend who who do the trips. So he she does the logistics side of things, uh, as far as booking the flights, booking the stays. Um, we have a lot of friends that help us in Indo already. Uh, we have we are in contact with uh, with the local um, rangers too, so we have access to places that normal tourists don't. And we acquired that over the years. So. So yeah, for Indo, we, we've done it at least, I think five times. And I'm taking a group of people in October again. So in, in that trip, after I'm done with the, with the group of people, it's only like nine days for the tour. I'm staying a month uh, for, the, for the Super Dwarf uh, project that I got going on. So that's this year. Speaking of the Super Dwarf <laughs> project, can we, can we, can we pull yes, that out? Yes, yes. So, <clears throat> Again, uh, hopefully we're not jumping all over the place. No, 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 that's um, perfect. Okay, so, so what I have here is a, uh, what, what, what the industry knows as a super dwarf. And not long ago, we thought they were the same species as the, what we call mainland. So, um, although they're differently in so many aspects, not only physiologically, but uh, temperament-wise too. Uh, you know, uh, to start, uh, they don't grow that big. I mean, uh, on average, I would say seven foot, it's, it's the range. Although I, I have some animals that are 10 feet and some that are four and a half, and they're adults. Um, so yeah, so this is a super dwarf. Um, up to a few years ago, uh, it was changed to a subspecies. So now um, it has a, uh, the name is uh, re, re, uh, Malayo Python, uh, Malayo Reticulatus. Jampianos, I believe, if I'm saying that correctly, yes. Um, so it became a subspecies. And that further 
how my theory on super dwarfs too where oh man it's such a it's it's the rabbit hole <laughs> yeah it's uh, the, that's we like rabbit holes around here we live to find well, rabbit holes well over the years um and when i say over the years for the past 20 plus years we've been calling them by what we saw on the bags when we were getting them imported like kalatoa kalatoa uh, kayuwari Maru, marus or karompas um me knowing the hunters and being out there i have not been into those specific islands but i've been to Soleil, i've been to Sulawesi, and the flores sea where it's near the komodo islands um, and i helped there and i've been there um, uh, i was there the first time a month and i've been going there twice a year could i make a uh, a disclaimer that i don't do well in front of cameras and <laughs> and if i get com uh, hopefully i'm clear on, on on what i'm trying to say and and hopefully the listeners understand that um, uh, physically I do get sick being in front of cameras and, and I don't um, put the words together as, as well as I sh should. Um, now, back to the Super Dwarf uh, uh, project that I got going on. So yeah, um, after learning the way hunters are gathering the animals for exportation, right? And the procedures that they have on keeping them separated to get the accurate um, locales and stuff, I realized that we might not be getting, that the descriptions might not be as clear as they should. Um, there is a couple of books and a, a, a couple of uh, research uh, papers on the matter, but not to go into details, but so far, based on my research, there hasn't been anything clear from people who have studied the three most popular locales. There is really no public pictures of the super dwarf in situ in the wild or clear records of uh, them, what they look like in the, in the specific islands. So to cut that short, my theory or what I believe in is that there is no natural barrier between the three major super dwarf islands and i believe based on my observations that they are still traveling between the three islands if that's the case there is no locale the variations that we see are happening within each island and we're just thinking that each island has its own pattern and head shape or size i think that might be wrong it's really hard to believe that in the last 100 years one snake from Carompa hasn't crossed a two mile stretch of water to Kalatoa and made or, or breed with the local population in that island. Based on, on what I've seen, uh, I, I've snorkeled in the area. To start, it's, it's not deep. It's not a big stretch of water that has a current. It's actually very mellow. They can actually drift uh, from island to the island without even swimming. And if you think about it, uh, retics in general, the, the, the the poolside retics, right? They have one of the largest distribution in the world. You can find them from Flores, which is one of the last islands in Indo, all the way to mainland uh, Thailand, uh, Taiwan, the Philippines, and they have conquered almost every island in Indonesia. The for travelers. Yes, for, for two reasons. Before they, the islands got fragmented, uh, there was population trapped within each island. But the other reason is because they swim. They're really good swimmers and they're okay in the water. Absolutely okay. I've seen them in rivers, in the wild, in Java, looking for them. And, and they glide so easily and cover land, cover distance easier in water than land, by far. So to cover two miles of, of water, they can do that in minutes. They can do that seriously in less than 10 minutes. They would just glide over the water. So to say in the last 100 years, none of those islands have seen uh, DNA cross their borders, it's impossible. There is no physical barrier, natural barrier, dividing them for us to say that they are specifically uh, locales. If there's bleed between them, the, the whole three islands, it's one locale. And there is variations and I've seen them, but I think it's happening within each island. And not only that, but based on the breedings that I've done over the years, I've seen variations within each clutch. Um, 
and, and that also is telling me that perhaps the differences that we're saying are just variations across just, the same species. It's not exactly, local based. It's not local based. But over the past 20 years, we've been just repeating what we heard from the people who started this, like Bob Clark. Uh, it's not saying anything bad about them either. They just They're just the repeating information. the information that they were given, but no, but we did not hear this from actual people who have been there to verify this. We heard it from trappers, uh, and then they go to the farm in Jakarta, which they grab and put them in, in, in a big um, enclosure, and just the bags, and then they grab and put them in bags again, put a name on it and send it over. So at least on this, um, super dwarf, I'm, I'm, you know, I started to doubt that anybody can tell me for certain what locale they are without, you know, basically what they're doing is just repeating information given by people who are also repeating information. Um, and, and I know it's going to be a little hard to, to believe or understand it, but hopefully this year I can uh, bring some more fresh data to the public and, and meaning I'm going to go there, take pictures of the actual animal on each island and tell you guys, yes, that what we've been saying, what Kalatoas look like, it's what they look like in that island. However, if I find variations, then what we've been saying is wrong. You know, well, but to change something that the industry has adopted for the past 20 plus years, it's going to be very difficult and controversial. Yeah, well, sometimes people are hard to accept change, but I think it's good. It keeps it fresh for me. This it makes it more interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, oh, something is not what we thought it was. That's yeah. what makes my I, life more interesting. Now, now, see if I can show you more or less how the islands are, are put together. You got Sulawesi, it's a big island. Down here, you got Salayer, and down here you got Jampia. About, I haven't measured it yet, but I would estimate about 20 miles, if not more. No, it has to be more. There is the three islands, Karatoa, Karompa, and Maru. And that's where the most of the super dwarf come from. There's other islands that have them, but those are the three most popular locales that we think we're getting the animals from. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm very, uh, uh, specific on those three. Okay, so Sulawesi does have a, uh, its own pattern, and we know that. We're very aware of the pattern, what it looks like, because we've seen records and recent pictures of them in the wild. There's documentation for that. So we know what, the, what that pattern looks like. We know what the Salayers look like, because there's, there's been people in Salayer who have shown us pictures in situ, and we've seen the pattern, and we know what they look like. Jampia, we also know what they look like, because there has been people there who has actually photographed them in the wild, and we can compare notes and say, yes, that's what they look like there. Karatoa, Karompa, and Kayuwari, there's very little to none. So, which is based on what people in Indo say. By the way, <laughs> I know how people work in Indo, and, it's, and, and, and they will also repeat information that they think is right, but might not be, so. Oh, so it's my Southeast Asian side. That's where I, that's where I get it from. Huh? <laughs> so so to, to go by what they say when they just pay a hunter to grab something and, and, and they buy it as Karatoa, I still doubt that, that that might be the case. So lately, within the last two years, I kind of refrain of calling my stuff, oh yeah, this is pure Kalatoa, because honestly, I couldn't say yes it is when I don't have the data. I don't have the photographical data that tells me for sure that's the pattern you're going to find in Kalatoa. So going forward, you're going, I mean, you're going soon. Yes, it's happening on, uh, I'm taking people in October, I'm staying there in November. This year? This so year. Then they're going to go, go yeah, around. It's already set. I, I, I just got to confirm my ticket and I'm, I'm gone. I already, I mean, we're going. We already paid for the lodge, car, travel, everything. I just need to buy my ticket uh, and then I'm gone. So again, base on my observations over the years, it is really hard to believe anybody has the information to call this by their locale name, thinking that the pattern and the size and the shape and colors is specific to a locale, to an island. I think that's not the case. Just again, based on the biology of the snake and how they travel through water, the observations I've done over the years, I, I've been breeding these guys for the past, consistently every year, for the past five years, and I kept them longer than that. And on those clutches that I produce, I've seen variations that could could be from another. If we were to put them in a in a pile, you would you would think it's from a different island, but you know they might not be. And and also based on the information that we got, when we get them in, 
you know? I open bags directly from Indo that say Cayuati inside, in, in the bag. And I'm looking at the animals and do not look like what we think Cayuatis are supposed to look like. So uh, my theory is that uh, we're getting mixed localities in and, and um, the variations might be, only, might, hap might be happening within each island. Well, you're gonna get to prove that out this year, yes, potentially, yes. Oh, right? man, hopefully that didn't um, generate uh, more confusion. That was my whole fear, too. No, I, I, you've made it pretty simple to me. It's, it, it seems, uh, from what you've seen, it's highly likely that all these different species, all these different locales that have come from these different islands are potentially not coming from all different locales from different islands. And they're just being mixed into these bags and you're getting them and they're all from one of those three islands. Exactly. You're just mixing around. And when you go there, you're gonna to go to each island, take photographs and properly document which animals are on which right. islands. And then you're gonna come back and with this information and be able to say, yes, this actually, these ones, or maybe you'll come back and say, Turns out Kalatoas are actually Karumpas. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, and, and or they're be, all just the same and, I, and, and they have the variations on every island. Yes, and I'm not trying to contradict anybody. But you just want uh, to get to the source of the truth exactly instead of just because refed information that's been refed. Over the years, inaccurate. we've just been repeating, and, and I'm guilty of it because I didn't know any better, and I was just repeating the information I heard or the information I was giving without checking the sources. But once I started doing that, I realized that uh, we might be giving, uh, we might be. Uh, uh, giving out the wrong information. Well, we're gonna we're gonna check back in with you after your trip, and we're gonna we'll see <laughs> we'll see where we'll do a part two. And we'll see yeah, yeah. You... And hopefully, um, do you think I need to clarify anything? Uh... No, I, no. You're solid, dude. You're, you're more solid than you think you are. Okay. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, dude. If you wanna follow up on it, uh, once I come back, I should have the information by January yeah. for the super yeah. show. Good. And again, um, you know, that will make uh, this. You know, I, I still have, it's just itchy for me to say 100% Kalatoa when, when we might be giving that information wrong. Well, we're going to find out soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Hey, no, thank you for having me. This is, uh, this is uh, definitely um, um, a first for me to do something like this. So that, that's why I did that disclaimer that if, I hope it's not confusing for anybody. I'll watch it back. If it's confusing, we'll just scrap it. Good enough. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that interesting theory to say the least. I'm really curious to see what's going to be happening. Actually, uh, coming up here in January is going to be the Anaheim show, which used to be the Pomona show, but now it's so big that it had to expand into the Anaheim Convention Center. And that's when I'm going to sit back down with Daniel again and kind of see what happened with his research out there in the field. And uh, I'm very interested to see what, what is going to become of that. It should be pretty exciting uh, when it comes through. Uh, next week, we're going to be going back to the Herpeton Talks, and Matthias Lem is going to be giving his talk on how he got into the hobby and just his general outlook on it as a younger part of the generation. Yeah. Until then, you've been watching Triple Beat TV. Y'all take care. Now, uh, let me ask you this. When you're doing this, where do you look? Like, wherever you want. You can look up at Spars, you can look at Space, you can look at Riley if you want to, or you can look at me. But if my face makes okay. you want to throw up, then you can, <laughs> you can just look at your snake, you can look at whatever you want. So if you want to say something directly to people, then you can just look right to the camera. Oh, or okay. you can look right to that camera. If you want to say, if you want to speak and say, you guys want to come hear Daniel talk about stuff, then you can tell him to look into this camera, or you can tell him to look oh, into that camera. Okay, I see, I see, I see. If you want to talk to the people that are watching. All right, all right, all right. But, but let's, um, I'm trying not to be all over the place. Um, if, if, if we do it where there's an order so I don't get out of the subject and because I'm, I'm on a wander off. Well, well, where did you, where, so you, you started, yeah, we've been about, we're, we're coming up on 20 minutes. Oh, okay. What's the time usually for? I usually do like 10, 15, oh, but okay. I, I'll, I'll, I'll edit it and stuff. It's, you're good though. You, you, that was great. You're okay. fantastic. You're way better than you thought you were going to do. Oh, man. All right. Pick it up where you dropped off, stick it on your face and smack it in your butt, butt. Yeah. Ouch.